Welcome to this tutorial on taxiing and takeoff procedures in the Mirage F1. We will go through some pre-taxi procedures, some useful tips for taxiing, mandated takeoff techniques, rotation speed and angle of attack, and what to look for in the cockpit during these procedures. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the Breve Penate Mirage F1 and today we'll be looking at taxiing and takeoff procedures. It's a fair day in the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan at King Hussein Air College. It's mid-afternoon and the weather is unusually mild with a slight wind. As usual, this will not necessarily be the from the manual way of doing things, but rather the real way of doing it. We have already looked at the startup procedure in our previous tutorial, so these procedures today follow on directly from that. Taxiing and takeoff procedures are similar enough in both the Mirage F1 CE and F1 EE, so if you are familiar with the cockpit layouts, you should be able to draw on today's tutorial for both. We'll be using the Mirage F1 EE. Okay, so we are sitting in our cockpit after startup and are currently idling on the apron. All of these switches are set as we left them at the end of the startup procedure. So we want to do a sweep of the cockpit, smoke over all the panels and gauges, and make sure that we are happy with the settings. In particular, we'll just double check that our taxi light is set appropriately, which it is. We'll ensure that the nose wheel steering high sensitivity switch is depressed, which it is. And confirm that the aircraft is trimmed neutrally. Check. All lights on the warning light panel are extinguished. And the lights on the front left dash discussed in the starter procedure are also extinguished. We'll adjust our seat height to suit with this switch here. This of course is personal preference, but I prefer it so that the orange heading indicator is roughly lined up with the top of the sight head. Now, should we wish, we can taxi with our canopy slightly ajar, as is often preferred practice. To keep the canopy from opening fully, we can engage the hinged canopy handle here. Disengage the canopy lock, which will sound the warning alarm, which we obviously need to silence, and open the canopy. We are not, we are going to taxi canopy closed, so we'll reverse the process. Now, I have a strange procedure that I like to do in the Mirage F1, and this is born out of previous mistakes. When I am happy that I am ready to taxi, I make a point of the last thing I do before disengaging the handbrake being setting the automatic shock cone control. I always used to forget to do this when learning the module, so now this is my way of saying to myself, yes, everything is good to go. There's absolutely no reason why you can't incorporate this into some other part of your own startup procedure. The shock cones operate at supersonic speeds and adjust the airflow entering the engines, aiming to prevent shock wave ingestion. If you are not planning on flying supersonically, then you don't have to set this, but nevertheless, it is good practice to set it anyway. Mafrak Traffic Reaver taxiing to active runway 31 via Alpha Delta. Mafrak. Okay, here we go. Cockpit is set and disengage the parking brake. We'll throttle up to approximately 7,000 RPM to overcome rolling friction, but then throttle back once she is rolling. 
Take care with the nose wheel steering, it can be quite sensitive, so practice with small inputs from your pedals and get used to the feel. The mandated taxi speed is about 20 knots, so you don't want to exceed this by much, otherwise you risk tipping the aircraft. At this speed, you shouldn't need to rely on your wheel brakes. Just the inputs from the rudder pedals should be enough to turn you nice and gently. In terms of maintaining speed, I find an engine output of about 4,500 to 4,800 RPM is sufficient to keep you rolling. You'll see here our RPM is a little on the low side and we are slugging along, so we can afford to increase that RPM just a little bit to a more suitable taxi speed. Runway 31 is our active runway given the current wind, so we've crossed over 13 and we'll turn onto taxiway delta. We've got quite a distance to cover to get to departure. Now, during taxi, there are a few things we can do. Some of these things we can do later in the air if we wish, but should we prefer, we could set our radar to emit. Personally, I prefer to keep the radar in standby until we are on interception. Should we be navigating via TACAN or VOR, we could set up these as required at this point, but again, I prefer to do these in the air. We should also quickly double check that the emergency regulation light is extinguished here next to the left console. Now, whilst taxiing, your airspeed indicator is redundant. There just isn't enough airflow pressure in the pitot tube for it to work at these slow speeds. However, a little cheat, if you are in the Mirage F1 EE, you can set your PCN navigation control panel to display the ground speed by setting the PCN parameter selector to VS slash RT. The left display shows the speed, here showing 22.2 knots. That should give you some indication of how fast you are moving along the taxiway. As we approach this turn, we'll throttle down and allow ourselves to roll towards it. Only use your tow brakes if you absolutely need to, but at these speeds, as said before, you should be able to nice and gracefully turn into them. Mafrak traffic reaver taking active runway 31 for an immediate northwest departure. Mafrak. Once lined up, we'll apply our tow brakes and extinguish the taxi light. And also set our anti-collision lights to fixed by moving this switch into the down position. Standard takeoff procedure is as follows. Holding the tow brakes on, we will smoothly throttle up to mill power and then beyond the detent into full afterburner. The Mirage F1's afterburner takes a few seconds to respond, and we should first monitor for the red afterburner fuel injection light to illuminate, followed by its extinguishment and the illumination of the green afterburner function light, labelled FON, next to it. This means that the afterburner is now lit. We will then release the brakes and aim to maintain the runway centerline with rudder inputs from the pedals. This is very sensitive, so do take it easy. Throttle up and beyond the detent into afterburner. Watch for the afterburner injection and function lights. Release the brakes and steer down the runway. Rotation speed is 120 knots. This should be monitored on the airspeed indicator. At 120 knots, we will rotate the aircraft to achieve an angle of attack of approximately 12 degrees. This should be monitored on the angle of attack gauge. Look out for a green light on the scale. Aim to hold this attitude until the aircraft lifts off the ground. 
This will occur at approximately 150 knots, depending on your weight and loadout. Rotate at 120 knots. Angle of attack of approximately 12 degrees. Retract the landing gear once you have a positive rate of climb. And retract the slats and flaps at around 200 knots. The red limb light will illuminate together with a warning sound if the limits of the gear slats or flaps have been reached, meaning you must retract them as soon as possible. At 300 knots, come off the afterburner to mill power and establish your climb angle. Ideally, this should be at a pitch that gives you an airspeed of between 400 and 470 knots, dependent on your weight and loadout. Typically, this is around 7 to 10 degrees pitch, and then trim your aircraft for this climb or activate the autopilot to maintain the climb. The position of the landing gear, slats and flaps should be monitored on the configuration panel. Gear indicators are at the bottom, slat indicators are at the top left, and flaps at the top right. The three green landing gear lights indicate that the gear are down and locked. When the lever is actuated to retract them, they will extinguish and the red light in the centre will illuminate to indicate the gear are in transit. During transit, the brake light will momentarily illuminate as the landing gear automatically apply them to stop the wheels from spinning. The red transit light will then extinguish to indicate the gear are retracted and stored correctly. The brake light, labelled frein, the French word for brake, will also illuminate when the wheel brakes are applied on the ground or the parking brake is engaged. Slats and flaps are actuated by the same lever. With our current high lift device configuration, moving the lever to the middle half position will move the flaps to the half position. When they are in transit, the red circular light will illuminate, and when they are in position, the amber half flap light will illuminate. It is normal for the slats to remain in their fully extended position dependent on flight conditions. Moving the lever to the forward fully retract position, the flaps will retract their transit indicated once again by the red circular light, but the position lights will now extinguish to show full retraction. The slats may also retract to their half position, the transit for which is shown by its red light and the amber half slat indicator. Let's watch a similar takeoff without any pauses. The only difference here is I have some weapons and fuel tanks loaded. She can be a little twitchy on the controls, but that was a fairly standard takeoff in the Mirage F1, so let's trim out and get ready for our climb. Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. Practice, 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 and remember to go easy on the controls. If you are wondering, breve penet means something with short wings. 
With heartfelt gratitude to my patrons, but especially Yan11 and Lakota21, your support will always be thankfully received and faithfully applied. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment and share, but until next time, virtual aviators, keep on rocking, keep on flying. This is Reba saying last call.